Good afternoon. I'm Evan White, Public Relations Manager with Employer Bridge, and joining me is Joni Biley, Chief Workforce Analyst with Employer Bridge. And we're here for one simple reason. We're going to be taking a look at the monthly BLS uh, labor statistics, and we're going to look back at October, and then we're going to look ahead a little bit for November. Of course, that report isn't out yet, but let me step aside for a second. Joni, you're here. Thank you for joining us. Excited to talk to you today. Yes, thank you, Evan. So exciting to kind of kick this off and um, let's have some fun and dig right in. Absolutely. We know that there's a lot of stories behind the numbers here. Before we get to that, Johnny, I just want to give you a chance to describe how important this report is every month. As we just look across sectors, obviously a lot of conversations uh, happen around this report and a lot of decisions are made as a result of some of what comes from this. It's not the full picture for the jobs market, but it is a good, good uh, piece of that. Yeah, it always amazes me, Evan, every time this report comes out because it does get so much hype and attention. And when you think about it, you know, millions and probably billions of dollars are traded based on some of these numbers um, that come out from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you know, for the first Friday of every month. What's interesting about that, though, is that we know the data isn't always exactly correct. And um, one of the things that we get in this monthly report is revisions, revisions to the two prior months. And sometimes we'll see some pretty big swings. So it really is interesting. It's a very important economic indicator. Um, a lot of eyes are watching, you know, when the data comes out to see, you know, was it is the economy strong? Are we moving in the right direction? Uh, but ultimately, it is a lagging indicator, you know, for the overall economy. All right. Well, let's uh, get right into it now, Joni, as we have the brief up. And this is a presentation, but it will be brief. We're going to go through just a few slides and then have a conversation with Joni. And if anybody watching has any questions, please feel free to, to add those where you're able to. And we'll bring them up as we can at the end of the discussion. And you'll be able to chat with Joni. Uh, in that way. So just the main statistics, again, this is the October report we uh, are looking at right now, the most recent BLS report, and you've got unemployment there, 3.9%, obviously the uh, labor force participation rate, 62.7%, wages at $34, and then 150,000 jobs added. Joni, will you walk us through each one of these and tell me what your, your thoughts were when, when you saw them? Yeah, well, we're still at record low unemployment, you know, 3.9%. Um, it was down, you know, months ago down to 3.5%. So we've seen it tick up slightly, but still very, very low unemployment. Um, so for many people that want to work, there still are a tremendous amount of job opportunities out there. Um, it is still a strong job market in many of the sectors. And um, labor participation, though we look at that headline number, 62.7%, if you really look at kind of prime age, working age, labor participation really is almost at record highs. So it's a little deceiving when we look at overall labor participation that only 62.7% of people are actually participating in the workforce. The truth is, you know, some of the people in those numbers um, have decided to stay home, could still be in school. You know, there's a, a few things that go into, into those numbers. Um, but what I really want to talk about is the number of jobs that were actually created for the month of October. We saw the headline number of 150,000. That was a little bit less than expectations. Um, and when you dig into those numbers, what you can see there on the screen, you know, the government added 51,000 of that 150,000 uh, jobs created. So the private sector only added 99,000 jobs. And we can see that job growth is definitely slowing. You know, there's still strong growth in healthcare, social assistance, uh, construction did well, but we did see a loss 
um, in manufacturing. Over 30,000 jobs were lost in manufacturing. And we're seeing a slowdown even in some of the sectors that we're adding some big numbers like leisure and hospitality has been very strong. Um, that is starting to slow down a little bit as well. So overall, I think the job market um, has been cooling off a bit, um, but there, there is still some growth um, in these sectors that you have up there, Evan, in, in the slide in front of us. Certainly, yes. I, I I know that as we look at some of the trends, you know, some of these that we see up here on the screen right now have been do, growing for several months. And as we look at it, areas. I, I'm curious to hear what your takeaways are, just big picture from this, and then we'll look at kind of what's next, Johnny. Yeah, I think so. Big picture. Um, the big disappointment was certainly that. Um, we saw loss in manufacturing, but it wasn't surprising. We do need to remember that the October numbers uh, did reflect the automotive strike. Um, and so those numbers were certainly impacted in the manufacturing sector. So a takeaway for me is that the JOLTS report, which is a job opening report, um, is showing us that manufacturing jobs are increasing, job postings are increasing. And with the strike, you know, being settled and people back to work, um, I do expect that we'll start to see manufacturing pick back up, um, certainly into Q1 of 2024. And, and that certainly is the hope. Um, but it, the job market is changing, um, though I don't expect big declines. Um, we are seeing some steady growth in the temporary health sector. Just this past month, we saw 7,000 jobs created in the temporary help sector. That's usually a good indicator that companies are starting to hire again. Unfortunately, when it goes in the other direction and we see the losses, we know that employers are slowing down um, and they you know, tend to let their temporary workers go first. So a good sign in October, 7,000 jobs created. Uh, hopefully more to come in that area as well. I would expect healthcare is going to remain strong. We'll be watching construction. We're seeing some good numbers, certainly um, in you know the data that's coming in, economic data um, around construction. So hopefully that will continue um, to add job growth in that field as well. And then the big one to watch will be the professional business services. Uh, we have seen many layoffs, like in the tech sector and companies that that have cut back. Uh, the truth is they probably overhired, um, you know, coming out of the pandemic and then were forced to make reductions in staff. But as things improve and hopefully we've had kind of that soft landing and see improvement, um, I hope to see jobs added back in that professional business service sector. You mentioned uh, what we could be seeing, and I'm just curious because I know we focused on the Bureau of Labor Statistics monthly jobs report, but since then, obviously, we've had uh, the consumer price index come out as we look at the same month and unchanged uh, inflation rising slower than expected that according to the Wall Street Journal. Curious to hear your thoughts on just where CPI is now and as we look at just the year um, that is passing. Yeah, I mean, I think we're definitely seeing some softening. Um, you know, one thing that we really track at Employee Bridge, as you know, is we like to compare kind of the hourly wages of our workers compared to the consumer price index. Um, and, you know, right now we've seen inflation just, you know, continue to climb and wages weren't really keeping up. Um, but we are seeing a little bit of some softening in the increase in CPI, uh, but I would expect that we're also going to see that in wages as well. So uh, probably that will flatten out um, and we'll continue to watch it and continue to, to definitely stay close to wages as well. Certainly. And I know we're just a couple of weeks away from most people this week are really just thinking about getting some turkey, some time off, yeah. and enjoying time, maybe some shopping. Uh, but as we look at a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll already be at the point in which the next um, BLS report is going to come out. And certainly retail is going to be a big part of what we look at, I'm sure, there. Any thoughts as we kind of look ahead? Not quite turning the page, but we're getting closer. Yeah, I think there will be a softness in retail. We're seeing retail spending. Um, 
has come in softer than the economists have um, predicted. You know, even I believe there was a reading out on that last week. Um, hiring again for the retail season um, does seem to be less than originally um, expected and predicted. So there could be a, a little bit of a soft uh, retail season here. And that makes sense when you think about it. You know, the consumers really have been carrying the economy, you know, for, for many months. You know, inflation has been at record highs. You know, even last year, I remember talking about the price of turkey around this time. Um, but, you know, though things are starting to come down a little bit, consumers have really felt the brunt of inflation. Um, and with a little bit of a softening job market, they may be cautious about spending. So I'm going to say it's going to be a little soft on the retail hiring um, and the numbers as they come in next month. Really interested to see what those numbers look like um, once we get past the end of obviously this month and a little bit into December. Uh, shopping season will continue clearly, obviously, as we um, get through that that month as well. But things certainly uh, interesting to see, and we will keep uh, an eye out for the other reports that come out. And really excited to talk to you, Tony. Any last thoughts that you want to leave folks with as we think about just this past month's uh, available jobs data and some of the predictions that you've you've uh, shared already? Well, I would I would just wrap us up, Evan, with saying, you know, there's just as we talk about, there's still a strong job market, but I want to recognize that there are some challenges. We know that there are many people that are working second jobs, right? Just to kind of close that gap on, you know, the rising costs of, you know, just everyday items. And it it really is impacting kind of the average American worker. Um, but uh, there is hope. There's lots of opportunity out there. I believe our economy, you know, certainly has a lot of strength. Um, and we're seeing a lot of manufacturing kind of come back to the U.S., um, which is, you know, looking forward, I think, a tremendous amount of opportunity uh, for us for, for many years to come. So um, it'll be fun to kind of watch the numbers um, and really dig into this. And I'm excited we're going to do this every month and, you know, look forward. We'll have guests on certain times and maybe different speakers, uh, but certainly lots to talk about as we unpack the labor market and kind of look to 2024. Um, but I'm hopeful that it's going to be a prosperous year. So I will just wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the holidays and I'll turn it back over to you, Evan. Thanks so much, Joni. It's been great chatting with you. And yes, we will be chatting again uh, in just a couple of weeks. We've had it scrolling there at the bottom of the screen. Folks who want to learn more either uh, about uh, Employer Bridges offerings or more about Joni, more about our insights, please visit our website, employerbridge.com. And we will be back again, yes, in a couple of weeks. We appreciate those of you who've tuned in here on LinkedIn to our EB Economic Brief for the first time. Have a good one. Thank you.